gives me great pleasure to uh, in, uh, introduce uh, Jane Martin today. Hello, Jane. How are you doing? Hi, David. I'm doing fine, thank you. Hope you're okay. Yeah, all doing okay, thank you. Um, it's great to have this opportunity just to have the conversation about how you've managed your career, what you've learned along the way. And also you're going to sort of talk to us a little bit more about one of your great passions in life and what you've learned from that and how you transfer that into the working environment as well, which I'm particularly keen to uh, find out more about. Plus also to find out what next for Jane uh, in terms of career, next ideas purposes and values and we can sort of have a discussion and see where that goes as well so um so again thanks for for, for joining us and yeah if you could just kick start us off with perhaps a, a bit of an overview of your of your career to date yeah no of course absolutely um so uh my career started uh with um doing a job that I really didn't particularly train or think what I would end up doing. It just sort of the opportunity opened up for me. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I started this job working in pharma and pharmaceuticals um, as a CRA. So coming out of the university and then suddenly getting this brand new BMW car and whizzing around the country visiting doctors was just fantastic. And I absolutely <laughs> loved it. But what I really got a passion for was meeting people, speaking to people and learning from them. And um, my career has continued within pharma and through the ranks of, you know, UK manager, European manager. I focus a lot on diabetes work, which was great. The part I really enjoyed was learning from people, getting out, meeting people, understanding, you know, in terms of diabetics, what their challenges and issues were, etc. Um, and then I had an international role which involved a lot of travel to the US. Um, and then in the latter part of my career, actually, um, the, I got moved to another department, which was uh, called clinical pharmacology, which is very technical, and I found that quite a challenging role. And then unfortunately, it's made redundant. So again, that in later life threw up uh, another set of challenges, but it's worked out fantastically for me. I've moved to uh, another com company, and I'm really focusing on work that I'm really passionate about. Um, so that's excellent. And then hopefully um, my short term aim really was to retire in the next couple of years. So we'll see how that goes with the corona, etc. But yeah. I have plans in place for that as well. Yeah. OK, brilliant. And just to go back to what you were saying about that, that passion and that love of, of learning, what does what does self-development mean to you? Self-development means to me is continuously learning, using every opportunity as a learning, and nothing was wrong. There's nothing you can do that's wrong as long as you learn from it. And that's what I've always lived by. And um, I don't have any regrets with what I've done in my career. I have a couple of jobs that weren't probably really suited to my skills, but then I've learned through them. And I've also, I, I've got a good opportunity where I was put in, as I said, this highly scientific role, which isn't really what I like. But when I worked in that department, I realized that there were so many highly technical scientists who were doing a fantastic job, but the department wasn't very particularly well respected because they weren't people person, they weren't selling or promoting what they were doing. So I managed to sort of create that role within that department to use the best of my skills, which was to um, sell the department to other parts of the company, etc., and raise a profile, which was great. So I think it's always about looking at every opportunity and I personally have this hour blocked in my diary every week, which I call my development hour. And sometimes it's just sat there thinking and other times it's researching and looking at, you know, what am I doing? Where am I going? What have I learned this week? Um, and that's really important because you have so much on your plate. Everybody does, you know, working and in your home life as well so if you can put that time aside for you to focus on you and just think about it sometimes you come up with nothing other times you come up with some great ideas just to improve how you work on your project or for things outside work etc so it's I think and I haven't been doing that all my whole life that's all been just been recently but I think you just become more focused on I need to do I need to continuously develop myself and I need to put time aside for me to do that yeah, I love that idea of a, a development hour and that's really quite important and um, obviously we all get lots of emails during the week and you think oh I can't read that now so I do have a, a folder that just says to yeah. read I put them in there and then yeah perhaps you know one evening of you know no, nothing else much happening I think yeah right let's let's go and do that reading and um, I think that's, that's, that's a really good idea so is there anything you wish you'd have known at the start of your career 
Um, yeah, I wish I'd known that um, it's really important for you to do what you want to do and what's right for you. And I think at the beginning, for example, I was told, oh, you should move into banking because you're really good at maths and that would be an obvious career move for you. I mean, that would have just killed me as a person. <laughs> um, but you're very led by other people at that age because you're not really confident about who you are or what you want in life. So um, I think that's, that's to me, is, 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 has been is a learning that I've had now. And I think it's like self-actualization is as you get older and you get more understanding about life and that's what you learn. And I wish I knew it a little bit earlier. Yeah. So I think I was led to do different roles and jobs, etc., that people thought would be right for me rather than what actually I thought would be right for me. Yeah. And you have another great passion in life as well, apart from your work. Um, just give us a bit of an overview of, of, of that. I know. Well, I won't give myself any credit for being good at it, but I do oh, play. Oh, you, yes. Do no, play no, 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 no. Let's stop, stop, stop. Jane is blooming good at this. <laughs> no, and no, no. she is represented. Well, I have played. I have played for in the National Vets competition and I have played for the Vets um, in Netherlands at one stage. But no, I, it's, it's not about what I've achieved in terms of how good I am, but I play field hockey and I absolutely love it as a passion. And I started playing the first team in my local town when I was about 13. And I've managed through all my life, all my careers, all my universities, whatever, to continue playing, playing hockey. And um, it's, I love sport in general. I love everything about sport, but it's just about me so much. And also, you know, it, it's a hockey family. And so you can move away from all your other parts of your life into your hockey family. And also it's a great stress reliever. And they don't care who you are. They don't care what job you are, what type of house you got, what car you drive. When you're there, you are Jane and that's it. And you're on that hockey field and you're just a player. So it's and, great. And you're there for the team. Absolutely there for the team. And it's all about, that's what I find really interesting as well, is in my hockey team at the moment, we have like up and coming 14 year olds who are amazing. And I play, um, we also have um, an England um, vet who still plays England vets over 55s. Um, she's in our team as well. We have the South of England vets player in our team. So we have the whole span of age range. So you learn what a 14 year old has done in the week. You learn wow. what the over 55 has done in the week. And you learn where the latest clubs are the 20 year olds ago. So <laughs> it keeps you in touch with life as well, which I think is always good. Yeah, then the jealousy sets in and think, oh, I wish, it I, really could stay, does. wish I could stay out to that that lateness on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday <laughs> I know. Uh, night. Yeah, okay, brilliant. And what about sort of, you know, using what you've learned through playing hockey into the working world? What are the similarities in terms of things that you've learned and developed? God, it's so much, it's so much. I think sport because you're exposed to sport at a much younger age before you even start working. So you begin learning and you don't really directly relate it at the time. Things about leadership skills, for example, it's really important that you're a good communicator on the hockey field, that you know, you work with the team, um, that also things like, um, respect for all your your other players because they all have different abilities at different ages, different skill levels, etc. And I think uh, more recently, I'm now captain of, of, of my team, I was captain of a netball team. And to me, that role is about, A, making sure everyone has fun, enjoying what they're doing. And then as captain, my key role is to make sure that everybody is in the right position, bringing out the best in their skill set. And if everybody works to the best of their ability, the team flies. And yeah. it's really, it's really rewarding. Yeah. And <laughs> do, you, do you have some of the younger younger adults sort of uh, giving you advice and telling you what to do oh completely and and it's quite embarrassing Which is great. There and do all these tomahawks and flicks and things that you can't do and you're like, <laughs> um but yeah no absolutely and and it's about teaching them they have to respect their elders and the team yeah. as well but we also have to respect that these some yeah. of these the talent is quite incredible coming through and, and, and just and i love playing with these and, and it's great when you can sit there and tell them right you've got to run as fast as you can at that wing and i'm just going to stand here at the back and shout at you and it's great yeah yeah it's like i can't do that anymore yeah brilliant i always remember playing uh cricket um when my son matt was 
you know, very young and batted with him and he had to tell me what to do because I haven't played for years. And also some of the other lads, I mean, and, and Matthew really understood cricket really well. And they were always telling me what to do and where to go and how to do things. And I thought, oh, shall I just go and get the teas and the sandwiches? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and I think that's, that was lovely, actually, because I learned loads from them as well, which was lovely. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's really... Um, you know, I have to talk to a lot of the parents, of course, for the safeguarding and all those sort of things yeah. as well. And it's trying to, you know, we even have development plans for the youngsters, which we Brilliant. never had a few years ago, but that's what we're trying to do them now to put them on the right course so that they can be really successful hockey players. Yeah, wonderful. And so, what's so, you know, thinking about the hockey and, and work, either in it, uh, both really, what's the best advice you've been given with regards to your learning and your career and your development? Um, I remember when I was the sort of mid twenties stage, and I'd done a lot of uh, a lot of work in a particular area, and I had a really dynamic mentor. Um, she was a physician, um, and I was really quite in awe of her because of what she had achieved in her life. And um, one day, she just sat down with me and um, really gave me a long time about how. I don't self-promote myself, how I'm far more talented than a lot of the people that are going place in the organisation. But, I, you know, to me, it was that important about just sitting there and doing a good job. And she went, she just said, you know, the Nike thing, just do it. Just do it. What do you, what do you like doing? And, and within like three, four months of that, I was standing in front of about 500 people talking at international conferences about device development. I was writing publications in magazines. And yet six months earlier, it hadn't even entered my mindset. So this... I think that's what I learned was just do it. What, you know, yeah. why not me? Why can't I do those things? And it just opened up the barriers for me and that was really helpful. And it's the same, you know, on, on the hockey field as well. It's like, just do it. You know, so at the moment, my, my 14 year old daughter, who is much better at hockey than me, is teaching me how to tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to a demonstration on this at some stage. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Had some astro in the garden, so I'm practicing, but. It's going to well, take I, a lot longer than she took. <laughs> okay, I would like a video of that. Then we can link right, up to okay. the end of this video. Um, so there's uh, there's a promise to everyone. We'll we'll uh, we'll get Jane to do that and demonstrate that. So what what have you enjoyed the most during your career to date? Uh, what have I enjoyed the most? Um, I, I went on a very uh, influential course right at the beginning uh, of my career. Something called Wilson Learning. I'm not even sure if it's around at the moment. And um, I was very um, reluctant to go on this course because I just heard it puts you in boxes and I was like well everybody's individual you can't possibly do that but when I went on that course it was really one of those jaw-dropping moments and I just suddenly everything in my life made sense about how people interact with each other and um, that was a massive learning for me um, and it, I learned for myself that I'm very um, um, task orientated but I get it done by working through people and I understood why people are different. And we were having a massive conflict at work where we had a very strong, headstrong physician who was very task oriented, want everything done yesterday. And I had a group of people who reported to me who were very talented, very lovely at what they did, but they were very people focused. And by just going on that one course, I suddenly realized that woman needed to know when, how, what, et cetera. So I used to write to her every Monday, this is what you told me we're gonna do, this is when we're gonna deliver it for you. And the whole relationship, the whole barriers broke down and she suddenly transformed into, she was working with an outstanding team, she was promoting us and it was just unheard of. It was all through this one course. So I think to me, that's one of the most important things that I've ever done. And I use that now in, in hockey and I sort of pre-analyze people all the time I'm like well are they red or are they yellow are they green how would they fit and then um and someone also told me that when you first meet your new manager or people you work with you should immediately just ask them those questions what do you like are you task focused are you people yeah. focused what's important to you understand them and then you can you can work better together um, yeah. and that really helps yeah and just being open about that because yeah some people like lots and lots of detail people other people just want a yes or a no um and then you know how to to present and communicate effectively with them um which is which is really important so any any sort of major challenges that you've perhaps i mean that was obviously one of them but any other major challenges that you've had that you felt yeah um that was tough but you've learned from it and you, you're pleased actually you had that opportunity to have that challenge yeah so i, I think um 
the going back to my mentor, um, the first thing she gave me to do was to present um, a kickoff meeting for a study, the most boring topic in the world, world about compliance in clinical trials. And, it, it, and she asked me to do this presentation. So I drafted it out and gave it a presentation. And she said to me, no, it's just absolutely not good enough. That's just boring. I've heard that a thousand times before. That doesn't hold my interest. And it came back and I rewrote it again. And she said virtually the same thing. And I was furious. I was angry. I was, I put ads into this. I, presentation's fantastic. And then I just thought, right, I'm going to do it completely differently. And I did it completely differently. And I looked up all these facts about how many hospitals have had a bad finding, how many investigators have been thrown out and da, da, da. And I pitched it from that angle to say to the, to the audience, you need, if you, don't listen and take this in. This is what could happen as a result of this. Yeah. So to me, that was a really good learning. And I came through that painful process of probably a couple of weeks, really angry and really frustrated and think, well, everybody does it like this. I'm doing just, if not better than everybody else. Why isn't this good enough? But it was a great learning. It was a great yeah. learning for me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I always try and think, how can I, how can I make this resonate with people when I'm talking or presenting or producing some work for people yes yeah no that's that's a very true thing and the world out there at the moment with social media um and you know all the noise of social media trying to create things that will resonate with people and grab their attention is becoming more and more challenging and so you know that's that's good advice for us all um in 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 those terms of communicating so that's all been great with what's happened and what is happening but what next for jane then well, I know. Well, well, thanks to COVID, I'm not quite sure, but I was hoping on, um, uh, well, I have a plan together for sort of retirement. And retirement to me, first of all, initially filled me with horror because I've had a lot of people that just go from very, very busy lives and just drop off that cliff and, and struggle. So I think it's been really important to sort of formulate what I want to do. So how I've approached it is I just thought about what do I like doing? And what do I want to do? And so what can I give? And um, so I've split it into three main areas. So first of all, um, I really like, I have a passion for working with young people and helping and mentor them because I feel at that stage in my life, I was probably pretty lost and didn't have many people I could reach out to. So I've been doing some work previously uh, at a school where I mentor people that move into sixth form because it's a massive jump from GCSEs into sixth form. And um, I, I did some, and it's not called coaching because I'm not officially qualified or trained, but just listening and mentoring these people. And I found that very rewarding for me. And also I've got some fantastic feedback um, from, from some of the staff about how kids have sort of helped and, and really improved and turned their lives around a little bit. Because some kids just don't have anyone to listen to. And I find that quite frightening. Um, and then also um, uh, sport, obviously, is my passion. So I'm currently uh, waiting to go on a, a level two coaching course for my hockey because I'd like to improve my coaching skills. Um, we have a really thriving junior section in our hockey club and they're always looking for people to volunteer. So I'm just don't want to go and down there and help. Um, I also want to do finish my umpiring qualification, which I can only do when we're back playing hockey and um, do that as well. And then also, um, I have to play sports. I'm going to learn a new sport and, and probably golf will be the thing <laughs> I will work my way towards. <laughs> Not as energetic as hockey, but still sort of stick and ball. So hopefully I should be okay yeah. at that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, and so the other thing I want to do as well is I think I need definitely have structure in my life. And I've had this business idea about um, trying to work with companies who um, donate money to charity and try and get companies to donate to schools to fund sports equipment because I was quite horrified at my own daughter's school that the quality of particularly the goalkeeping hockey kit that they had it was just a mixed match and I'm not even sure it was safe and it scared the life out of me and, and I know I've worked in company where I've made decisions about who gets some of the money that local companies give to local charities and things so I'm trying to work through a business plan of how I can I can set something up like that, um, not to make money for myself, but just to hopefully direct the money to the local schools and, and, and improve the quality of sports. At those that's schools. brilliant. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's really important that, you know, you're not just thinking about a bucket list of things to do, but actually do things that give you purpose and value. 
yeah, sports, sports has been my passion. And um, my other sort of big uh, frustration is that when you say sport to people who say they don't like sport, is they just say, no, it's not for me. And that really frustrates me as well, because I think there's a lot of people out there who are fantastic sports people. They might be dancers or, yeah. or even just walk the dog. You are doing a sport, you're doing an exercise and it's healthy and it's good for you. So that's yeah. something that's also, if I, if I could do anything to encourage more people to get into sport, it's been just a valuable lesson for me. I'd love to do that. Yeah. So in summary then, you've, you've obviously future-proofed yourself through your career. Um, mixing obviously your, your love for your hockey and and your work and that continual learning you know dealing with learning how to communicate and it's really interesting what you said with regards to when you've got uh, um, you know very clever technical people brilliant at what they do they're not always particularly good at getting that message across and doing their PR and you've put the both skills together to obviously make you know the areas that you've worked in very successful and I think that's a really important aspect and so you future-proofed yourself for all of those and I know it sounds a bit crazy but you are future-proofing your next step by making sure that you do create value and purpose and well-being in what you do because we've still got to look after ourselves Absolutely. you know it isn't just about the financials it is about the well-being as well and and having that purpose and I think that's lovely, you know, giving things back. And when you're giving things back, you're enjoying it as well. So um, I think that's a really nice approach to take. And you've obviously given that quite a lot of reflection time. Um, and I think that there again is something that we're not very good at is sitting down and reflecting. Oh, what do I want to do with this time? And, you know, creating real value and purpose. So, yeah, that's wonderful. So thank you very much for your time. Very enlightening. And, um, you know, I look forward to seeing how this goes and uh, especially that idea with regards to getting companies to contribute and getting yourself out there and being that link between schools and companies uh, um, I think that's a that's a great model that um, I know some perhaps private schools and some perhaps grammar schools are very good at that but other schools just don't yeah. have the resource to do it do they absolutely absolutely yeah. 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 Okay, well, thank you very much. I look forward to hearing your story and continuing. So hopefully you can come back in perhaps six months or a year's time and do another one of these and give us an update. Absolutely, Dave. And I'll send you that, that picture of me doing the tomahawk as well at some stage. <laughs> I look forward to that. Okay, thanks very much, Jane. See you soon. Bye. Bye.